to be. Or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them to die, to sleep no more. And by asleep we say to end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. It is a consummation devoutly to be with, to die, to sleep, to sleep. A chance to dream, ah, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life, for who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of disprise at lot, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns the patient man of the unworthy takes when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin, who would part or spare to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied o'er with the pale cast of thought and enterprises of great pith and moment. With this regard the currents turn her eye and lose the name of action. Softly now, the fair Ophelia, nymph in thy orisons, be all my sins, remember.